I now give the floor to Ms. Uh, Michelle Koninsk. For the opportunity to brief the Council on the 13th report of the Secretary General on the threat posed by Daesh and the continued efforts of the United Nations and member states to counter the threat. I'd also like to thank uh, Under Secretary General Vorongov for his overview of the report and to commend both the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism and the Analytical Support and Sanction Monitoring Team, led by Mr. Admiral Stephen Brown, for their invaluable contributions to the report. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, as USG Vorongov rightfully said, we all are witnessing the rapidly evolving situation in Afghanistan. And I also wish to echo the Secretary General's appeal to the Security Council to take all possible steps to ensure that the situation in Afghanistan does not result in Afghanistan being used as a safe haven for terrorism. Despite welcome progress in the rollout of vaccines, the COVID-19 pandemic has continued to have negative impacts across most policy areas over the past six months. However, as we outlined in CTAT's most recent analytical paper published in June 2021, COVID-19's impact on terrorism and counterterrorism has been more mixed in many non-conflict zones, pandemic-related restrictions have continued to help suppress terrorist activity. In conflict zones, however, where the impact of pandemic-related restrictions is limited, the increasing interplay between terrorism, fragility and conflict has caused the terrorist threat to grow. Indeed, Daesh and its affiliates continue to pose a significant threat in the West, East and Central Africa and Afghanistan, while simultaneously prioritizing their efforts to regroup and research in Iraq and the Syrian Iraq Republic. CTAP's analytical paper also emphasized the pandemic's worrying impacts on humanitarian programming across the world, including in Iraq and the Syrian Arab Republic. We continue to be concerned by the dire situation faced by these individuals, mainly women and children, with presumed links to Daesh. Through the virtual component of the Counterterrorism Committee's recent hybrid assessment visits to both Iraq and to member states from which FDFs had travelled to the conflict zones, CDAD has continued to monitor compliance with the relevant Security Council resolutions. Although United Nations entities continue to promote the safe, voluntary and human rights compliant return of foreign nationals from Iraq and the Syrian Arab Republic, many remain stranded in crowded, crowded camps with limited access to essential services, due process and fair trial. These concerns have only been exacerbated by the pandemic. Secretary General's report highlights violence in the camps and forced disappearances and other human rights abuses as serious concerns, in addition to the forced returns, the prevention of return, and the discriminatory treatment of families with a perceived link to Daesh. Further efforts are needed to create conditions under which social cohesion can be promoted and further Daesh violence prevented while ensuring respect for human rights and the rule of law. Mr. President, Excellencies, these challenges remind us yet again of the critical need for us to strengthen national, regional and international counterterrorism efforts. In this regard, I welcome the discussions held during recent hybrid assessment visits conducted for the Counterterrorism Committee of the Security Council, the 21, 2021 Counterterrorism Week, and its side events and new threats, um, or new threats, threats and challenges, and how best 
to marshal our collective efforts to address them. I also welcome the Counterterrorism Committee's approval of the revised overview of implementation assessment and the electronic detailed implementation survey in March 2021, which were developed by CDET in accordance with Resolution 2395. These new analytical tools will help CDET to improve our monitoring of the implementation of relevant Security Council resolutions by member states in a timely manner and will enhance CDAT quantitative and qualitative analytical capacities and capabilities. They are also expected to support member states of efforts to adopt comprehensive and integrated counterterrorism approaches. It's also important to reflect on other examples of progress made over the past six months. Criminal justice responses, international judicial cooperation, and the development of comprehensive and tailored prosecution, rehabilitation, and reintegration strategies have continued to be significant priorities for CDAT and many of our UN partners. CDAT, in cooperation with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and UNOCT, has supported efforts to increase cooperation in investigations and prosecutions at the national and local levels in Nigeria and the Lake Shark Basin. In March, CDAT, UNOCT and UNODC jointly held a regional workshop that promoted gender responsive approaches in PRR strategies in the Lake Shark Basin. There has also been welcome progress in the development of good practices in international and regional counterterrorism cooperation, including in relation to judicial cooperation, mutual legal assistance, and extradition in terrorism cases. CDEP and our partners further supported the Maldives and the Philippines on the use of the internet and social media in counterterrorism investigations. And CDEP together with UNODC, continued to tailor their South Asia Regional Toolkit for judges to the national context of Maldives and Pakistan. Mr. President, Excellencies, see that analysis suggests that terrorists and terrorist groups, including Daesh, are exploring alternative methods of moving funds due to the impact of pandemic-related measures on money transfer networks and the use of social media crowdfunding campaigns for Daesh fighters and their relatives in camps in the Syrian Arab Republic also remain an ongoing challenge. To address these challenges, see that in cooperation with other UN entities, continues to work together with the Financial Action Task Force and the FATF star regional bodies and the Global Counterterrorism Forum. And due to the terrorism financing risk associated with the illicit trade in natural resources, CDAT, together with the UN Counterterrorism Center, supported the Eastern and Southern African anti money laundering group in implementing its regional operational plan for combating the financing of terrorism. CDAT continued to play a key role in facilitating technical assistance, including by leading virtual consultation missions, which fall under the all of UN approach, UNOCT, UNCCT global programs, and by supporting activities on topics including terrorism arms, crime nexus, protection of vulnerable targets, fusion cells, and countering terrorist travel. CDAT and UNODC also held a workshop to promote relevant Security Council resolutions and offer expertise to Nigerian law enforcement officers in the application of international best practices regarding intelligence collection and... and Mr. President, Excellencies, Daesh and its affiliates remain a significant concern and threat to international peace and security. The upcoming joint open briefing on ISIL in Africa on the 18th of October upcoming will allow us to further explore the recent evolution of these affiliates on the African continent. A comprehensive, coordinated, one UN approach remains crucial to develop and implement effective counterterrorism measures 
while also addressing conditions conducive to the spread of terrorism and violent extremism. And of course, we must do so while ensuring that our multilateral counterterrorism efforts do no harm. In closing, I would like to express my hope that the forthcoming CTC special meeting on the 20th years of anniversary of the adoption of resolution, landmark resolution and set by Mr. Vronkov 1373 on the 13th of September 2021 will serve as a forum for further enhancing and strengthening our multilateral counterterrorism efforts. I do thank you, Mr. President.